One complaint I often hear buzzing around to do with Guild Wars 2 is the worry that the game will suffer because it lacks traditional large scale rating. In this video I'll explain why I really don't think this is such a bad thing and in fact why I think Guild Wars 2 is better off for the system ArenaNet have chosen for it. So, in traditional MMOs, the really difficult, super rewarding dungeons or raids are the ones where you need to get 10 or more people together for an epic slog through a huge dungeon full of overpowered enemies. But Guild Wars 2 has no such thing. Instead, all the insanely difficult content is completed by just five people. At first, that might sound bad, really bad, but let's see why they've done it. I think the most obvious point to make first is the time it takes to group up and form teams. Obviously, if you only need to find 4 other people instead of 10 of them or more, it's going to be much easier. I don't think this was much of a deal breaker because most MMOs have been quite good lately at making grouping easier on their own. We have things like dungeon finders and how as soon as you have a guild it becomes practically a non-issue, but it's an important point to make nonetheless. I think what's nicer is that when content inevitably becomes old or unrewarding a few years down the line, it will still be easy for people to make teams and play the old stuff. Another benefit along these lines is the fact that of course with less players in the team, there's a reduced chance that those players will disconnect or leave you halfway through. And that's not just because of statistics, but also because everyone in a small team will find it easier to communicate with one another. You're more likely to know if that warrior you're with is about to have his lunch, or you'll know if that elementalist has been getting lag spikes all day. This increased level of communication is, arguably, a merit of the system in its own right. Not only does it become easier to talk to the people you're playing with and strategize with them, but it also makes it easier to connect and have fun as you go. MMOs are, of course, sociable games. You'd think that raiding with loads of people would offer more opportunity for communication, but I think you'd be surprised. It's the difference between being in a busy market street or left in a room with just one other person. This in mind, I think it's quite safe to argue it'll be easy to find a group of people you really enjoy playing with and form something of a regular team. Another nice benefit of the five-man system is actually how easy it will be to take that team into other areas of the game, such as PvP. In fact, I'd wager that ArenaNet specifically set it up this way so that groups of friends form in PvE and then can easily get their feet wet in the other game type, a form of endgame in itself. I'm not saying that they'll be immediately good at PvP by any stretch of the imagination, just that dungeons serve a very convenient platform to other types of gameplay. But still, I wouldn't honestly say that any of these points I've just made alone are particularly outstanding. No, I think the biggest reason for ArenaNet making this change was to do with role dilution. By this, I mean that when playing with lots of other people, your role in the team, the impact you make, is diluted. I'm sure we've all experienced this. You're in a raid as a DPS, and you find yourself spamming skills. One, two, three. One, two, three. Over and over and over again. It becomes really hard to see how your damage, the damage you're doing, measures up in comparison to everyone else's. I think MMO developers have been quite clever about this in the past. In fact, I'd argue it's the reason the Holy Trinity exists. I mean, the tank knows exactly what role he's serving. It's a way for people to see the impact they're actually making on the team. But the Trinity doesn't seem to fix the issue for everyone. With a five-man team, things become quite different. Everyone is a lot more dependent on everyone else. Every skill you use makes a noticeable difference, and it's easier to notice the difference everyone else is making too. You might see an ally's elite be used and then decide to use your own. You might see someone running from a particularly dangerous monster and switch targets to help him out. Generally, everything you do becomes a lot more impactful and you end up feeling more useful as a result because you can actually see the difference you're making. Increasing the focus on each individual player may have even been the big thing that enabled ArenaNet to remove the Holy Trinity altogether, instead using their new system whereby players can dynamically choose when to heal, when to defend, and when to attack all on their own. The new system doesn't really work very well in big teams, because it's hard to keep track of what everyone else is doing and to know what role to shift to yourself at any given moment. This may actually be why Guild Wars 2 doesn't offer 5-man and large-scale raids, if you've been wondering that. Why don't they use both? Well, I actually think there's a bigger reason, and that would be about keeping difficult content difficult for everyone in the group. Current MMOs using the Trinity are pretty static in their approach. There tends to be lots of pressure and skill required, but only of certain players, like the tanks, while very little is asked of the DPS and the healers. And when you think about it, that doesn't make much sense. Shouldn't the elite, super difficult content be just as difficult for every member of the team? Why is it that so much relies on the tank doing his job right, while I stand around at the back face rolling the keyboard and get the exact same rewards? 
Not only is there a disparity between what's required of different team members, but in my opinion, large team sizes also don't punish weak links well enough. And by that I mean if I'm playing really badly in a huge team, it's far easier for the others to pick up the slack and get me through the dungeon, even though I shouldn't rightly be there. If you've managed to complete a Guild Wars 2 dungeon, you know you've all worked for it and you all deserved it. This is simply a matter of consistently keeping what's supposed to be difficult end game content just that. Difficult. There's plenty of stuff in Guild Wars 2 that isn't supposed to be elite end game, like dynamic events and world versus world. And guess what? Those let you have organised groups of well over 100 people running around in a glorious chaotic clusterfuck. So if this really doesn't scratch your itch, feel free to go there. And please, stop complaining.